All right. Here we go. We're going to use the flow chart to actually do some calculations. We're going to use our calculator to kind of answer some questions. Uh, you can't see the flow chart because when I'm going to use it, I'm going to pull it up like this so we can take a look at where we are and where we want to go. I'll write the questions up. We'll go this way for a couple. We'll go along the bottom for a couple. And then I'll do like a between one, okay? So I'll do five examples, all right? Here we go. First, the flow chart. Remember what it is. We just went over the last one. Hopefully you understand where it came from. Um, we jump to go from X to Z. We use the Z formula. You put an X value, a data value in, a Z score comes out, the number of standard deviations away from the mean. And once I have that, if I want to find a percentile, I use norm CDF, give me the percent. And usually in percentile, you go from negative 999 up to here. We talked about that last video. Suppose a percentile, I'm trying to find the number of acorns or whatever the data that goes with it. I use inverse norm. I put a percent in with a uh, percentile in with a decimal. Make sure like 5% is 0.05. 50% is 0.5, so be careful. And then in that, I put, a, I put that in, the z-score comes out. Once I have the z, I put it in this trusty little formula, and I get the data value I'm looking for. So let's start out with a couple. Let's do a problem. All right. Um, the good thing is I have this little, the, the normal model. I like to draw a model with any problem before I start answering questions because it lets me see the data. So we're talking about here again chipmunks the, uh, and how many, how many uh, uh, acorns you can fit in a chipmunk's mouth. So I ran around, I collected, I grabbed all these chipmunks, shoved uh, acorns in their mouth, kept the, kept the data and found out it was unimodal and symmetric. And I found out the average ch ch uh, oh no, squirrel, sorry, squirrel could fit 24 in their mouth. And then uh, in the standard deviation, the average distance to the mean was 6. And I built this model. The model tells us that about 16%, here's the percentile, could fit less than 18 in, where 84% fit less than 30. Only 2.5% fit more than 36. And we talked about reading this uh, chart. We have the percentiles here, the z-score is here, and the actual number of acorns here. These are areas under the curve, so you can see 34% um, are right here, had between 24 and 30 in their mouth. You also have, uh, let's say, 13 and a half had, could fit between 12 and 18 acorns in their mouth. So this is all, this is the number of acorns. Remember, that's the data we're looking for. So here's the first question. I'll write it out there. Um, what percent fit less than 14 acorns in. Okay, well, I can just look at it because I'm given a number of acorns. I can say, oh, 14's right here. I guess, I don't know, like, well, two and a half, let's say six, eight percent or something, somewhere between here, less than. It says less than to the left of. So let's see if we can actually figure out the real value, okay? So I'm gonna take out my trusty flow chart. I'm given a number of acorns. 14. So in order to find the percent, I need to use the Z formula first and then norm CDF. So I'm going to start with the Z formula. Here I go. The Z score for 14 acorns is 14. Remember, I'll write it out first here. Is the value minus the mean over the standard deviation. 14 minus the mean, 24, divided by the standard deviation, 6. So 14 minus negative 10 over 6. If I put that in my calculator, my trusty calculator, 10 over 6. 10 divided by 6 will give me my Z score, 1.66. So my Z equals whoop, one, negative, sorry, negative 10 over negative 1.66. Let's see if that makes sense. 14 acorns, 14 acorns, negative 1.6. That makes sense. Let's see if my percent that I guessed, around 6, 8% 8, 8 or something, let's see if that works too. So now look what I did. I'm starting here. I'm trying to get over the percent. I just did the first jump and I got my z-score. Yeah, now I've got to use norm CDF. I put two z-scores in. I want percent, I want less than. So I know one z-score I'm going to put in is right here negative 1.66, but I want the area from here down forever. So I'm going to do norm CDF. Norm CDF. I'm going to start at negative 999 and go all the way up to negative 1.66 to find the percent. So, second, district, two, norm CDF, negative 999, comma, negative, 
make sure you use a little negative and negative. 1.66 and hit the enter button. What do I get? Here it comes. About 0.0048. About 4.8%, almost 5%. Let's see if that makes sense. Less than it, less than 14 acorns, about 5%. That makes total sense. Suppose instead it said more than. Well, the first step is going to be the same because they gave me a data value. I just need to find out the z-score that corresponded with it. The only difference is going to be this. Now I want more than 14. So I still get my z-score, negative 1.66, but now I want to know the air area from negative 1.66 up forever. I don't want to know the left, I want to know the right. So I'm going to start at negative 1.66, and I'm going to find the area from, from here way out, not one standard deviation above the mean, not two, not three, I'm going to go 999 standard deviations above the mean. Yeah, I said it, so let's see, mm, second dister, two, negative 1.66, no, six, six, comma, 900, nah, nah. We said 5% was less than, so 95% must be more than. Check it out. Yeah, boy! Flavor Flav would be fired up! You guys might not know who Flavor Flav is, but he likes big clocks. Uh, he used to carry a big clock, like about this big, and you go back. It's back in my day. The monkey ain't no joke. He had like 911 is a joke. Public enemy, yeah. Okay, anyway, um, so there's two problems we just did. Does that make sense? All right, we just did two problems. Let's do two the other way, all right? What's the question going the other way? Use the flow chart. We just remember, we jumped here and here. So um, suppose there's a, uh, a, a contest, like there's, there's going to be like an uh, a acorn stuffing contest, and you need to be in the top 8% of squirrels. So how many... Acorns to get into top eight percent of all squirrels. Oh my goodness! You've got to, you know, you got to get up there. And I can just guess. The top eight percent. Don't be fooled. Is not the eighth percent aisle because aisle tells you below. The top eight percent is way up here. Only eight percent is more than it. So it's the 92nd percentile. So top 8% means 92nd percentile. Don't fall for that trick. Now, I can guess the number of acorns by going to the 92nd percentile, looking down at number of acorns and seeing it's about 32 or something. So I can also guess the z-score. It's probably one point something. So let's look at my guess. My guess is like, I don't know, 1.3, and I'm going to guess about 32 acorns. So I'm going to say, I'm going to guess a z of about 1.3 and 32 acorns. Just guessing by looking at my model, we'll see how useful that model is. But I want to know exactly. So let's use the flow chart. They gave me percent aisle. Remember, inverse norm, you can't put percent, you have to put percent aisle, percent to the left. The top 8% is in the 92nd percentile. So I'm here. Okay, see that? I want to go from percent aisle over to z-score. I need inverse norm for that. Okie dokie. Remember, the input for inverse norm is a percentile and decimal. So I'm going to do inverse norm, top 8%. I'm going to do inverse norm 0.92. Let's try that. Second, district three, inverse norm, 0.92. Oh, I was off by a little bit, 1.3, but I was close. Inverse norm. Inverse norm, 0.92 is 1.40507. So I got my z-score. The actual z-score is 1.405. Nice. I guess 1.3. Not a bad guess. Thank God for that model. And I know that I didn't make a mistake because this model helps me realize oh, I'm kind of on the right track. Now, let's check the flow chart. I just did one step. Let's go back to the flow, yo. Now, I went from here. 
all the way over to here. I'm at Z. I've got my Z score. I'm 1.4 standard deviations above the mean. Now what do I do? Ah, I used the formula that tells you that my value is this many standard deviations above the mean. It totally makes sense. So now I went from here to here. I got my Z. Now I just go, I get my X. Just use the formula. The formula looks like this. The value I'm looking for is this many standard deviations above the mean. The value I'm looking for is 1.405 sixes above the mean 24. I, I can put it in my calculator exactly like that. Thank goodness, because I don't, can't do that in my head. And you know what I'm going to do? Because 1.405 is already in there, and which is pretty nice, I'm just going to hit times. And it, notice right here it says ants. That, that's, that ant, ants is 1.40507. So I'm going to do that times 6. Yeah, plus 24. What do I get? 32.43 equals 32. Oh my god, 43 acorns to get in the top 8%. Look what my guess was. About 32, about 32. Yes. Yes. That's the celebration. When you get close, you can do it. Just. Just let it out. Now, all right, so that's it, okay? Did you got that ring? All right. Um, so we just went one way, uh, two up here. Let's do a between one. What the heck? Let's do a between one. All right, one more, all right, using the flow chart. What percent of the squirrels, what percent of the squirrels, what percent of squirrels could fit between 20 and 25 acorns. That's what I'm worried about. That's the question I'm asking you. All right, here we go. I want to know between 20 and 25 acorns. Now, the good thing is I have that model that I built. Just knowing this thing, the mean, the standard deviation, I can build this model and put all this stuff in. We talked about those in the other videos. I can eyeball this and guess the C-scores and guess the percent. Ready, here we go. 20 and 25, here's 20. Right after 18, 20. So I'm going to guess, let's, for 20, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess a Z for 20. I'm going to hit my little chart, 20, 25. Let's guess my Z. I'll just write it right under it. How's that? 20, I'm going to guess the Z is um, between 0 and negative 1, uh, negative point six. Or, no, negative 0 0.7. And let's go to 25. 24. Oh, 25 is just past here. It's between 0 and 1. So, like, I don't know. How about, like, point 0.2? Positive point 0.2. 0 0.2. So, that, those are the z-score guesses. Um, but let's take a look up here. The percent between... I don't know. Well, I know 68% is here. So, what? It's less than 68%, maybe 50, 40, no, 51%. I'm going to guess 51% is between there. Between there. Right? 51%. So, let's take a look at here. Z score. You need to find them. I'm given two data values. If they gave me two data values, they probably want to give me two Z scores. Why? Because if I put two Z scores in, it gives me the percent between. And that's what I want. What percent between these? I can't just put 20 and 25 into norm CDF because the intake for norm CDF are z-scores. But I can put the z-score for 20 and the z-score for 25 in. Oh yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. Let's calculate. The z-score for 20 is 20 minus 24 over 6. The z-score for 25 is 25 minus 24 over 6. Let's see if our z scores are even close. Hmm. And make sure if you're going to enter this in your calculator, don't just type it like this 20 minus 24 divided by 6, okay? Because look what it gives you a z score of 16. Are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? Okay, so hopefully you know that uh, that that's that's not that's something wrong with that. So your your calculator follows the order of operations. So you want to put it in, in parentheses. 20 minus 24, it'll do the subtraction for you and then divide it by 6, something like that. 20 minus 24 divided by 6, and it gives you negative 0.6666666. You can say it's negative 2 thirds, negative 0.667. Not bad, it rounds up. I mean, down to negative 0.7. So not bad, not bad. I kind of guessed it, kind of guessed it. Makes sense though, I know I'm close. I guess 51%. Well, let's see if I can. I guess 51%. We'll see in a minute. Let's find my z score here. 25 minus 24. I'll put them in parentheses just to make sure. 25 minus 24 in parentheses divided by 6 it is mm, positive 0.166. Ooh, that rounds up to 0.2. I'm close. I'm not too far. So now I've got two z scores. Hmm. Where's my. I need my flow chart. Remember where I am? Flow chart. Head data value, found Z. Mm. Now I use norm CDF. If I put just two Z's in, it gives me the percent between. So let me do that. I'm going to do norm CDF, negative 0.667, positive 0.166. Okay? okay, somewhere in here, somewhere in there. Let's see what happens. I'm going to do it again on my calculator. Hopefully it's around 50, I guess around 50%. Let's see. All right. Um, second, dister, um, two, norm CDF, negative 0.667, comma, 0.166. All right, here we go. Oh, I was way off, 31%, but it makes sense. 31% between there. I guess 50, I was off by a little bit. 31%, but I knew it was less than 68. And that's how you use the flow chart. Hopefully that helps you. You're either going to just go over with just one z-score, down here with one, or when you do them between, find two z-scores and put them both in norm CDF. Norm CDF, when you want a percent more than, put the z-score in first, then positive 999. Norm CDF, when you want less than, put negative 999, then the z-score. Between the norm CDF are just both z scores for the two uh, values. Okay, inverse norm. Don't forget, it's a percentile always, and it has to be in decimal form. So two and a half percent is 0 0.025. Uh, a half of a percent is 0 0.005 because a half is 0.5. So you move the decimal over twice. So don't forget that. All right. Good luck.